Hey, good morning. Trying to do another video here. Several takes. Last one was good, but YouTube cut off the top of the oscilloscope, so we're going to try this again. Um, making this video for two reasons. One, another successful replication. Uh, I don't really have it tuned all that well, but uh, at least I can show the effect. And uh, two, there was some issue where uh, Mad Scientist and I were both seeing where you would short POC2 and the light would actually dim and the input would go up. And Chris had mentioned that it's probably a polarity issue like diodes, right hand rule, whatnot. Uh, but I also wanted to show that um, at certain frequencies, at certain duty cycles, you can get the opposite effect of what you're looking for, um, just having the wrong settings. So, anyway, uh, first to start off with, I have my Core AMC C 800B. Uh, the POC coils are 410 turns of 0 0.8 millimeter. Input coil is 25 turns of 1.2 millimeter wire. Uh, running at 12 volts, currently 12.5 kilohertz, 16% duty cycle. Uh, my bulb, I was using a 12 volt, 300 milliamp rated uh, for the most part, but the effects seem to be a little bit more visible when I moved up. I went to 14 volts and then 24 volts. And right now I'm using a 34 volt bulb. So, I've got my scope on the input. Um, you can see for the mean reading, it's about right on the edge of 1 watt. 12 volt, 163 milliamps from the DC power supply. But we'll see when I unshort. DC power supply goes up to almost 180 milliamps. Short, it goes down. Unshort, short. And if you can see the bulb, uh, hopefully you can see it on the camera. Let's see. Unshort, short. It gets brighter. Unshort, short. Unshort, short. So, we're getting the effect that we want. Uh, let me go ahead and move these to POC1. Remember the it's floating around one watt on the input there. Okay, so there's the sawtooth. Uh, let me adjust some things here. Okay, so I think that's accurate. I did do a light comparison. I have a battery over here at 12 volts. and Anyways, so we're seeing RMS value of 1.2 watts on the output. And we're not going to measure POC2, just using that for shorting. So we already see the effects that we're looking for. Nice sawtooth waveform, unshort, short, unshort, short. Light gets brighter, input comes down. Um, so what I wanted to show actually was, for example, if I drop this to, let's say, 5 kilohertz, I guess I can just punch it in. Still got the sawtooth. But when I short, it'll get dim. And the input goes up. On short, short. On short, short. On short, short. And there's actually, let me see if I can find it, 3.3. There's an area where the input goes down like it's supposed to, but the bulb still gets dimmer. And no, nope, that's not it. Maybe you just have to take my word for it. Yeah. I think it was at a different duty cycle. Maybe it was at about 10% duty cycle. Anyway, my point being, um, Keeping the polarity of the diodes the same, um, using different frequencies and different duty cycles, you can find the correct effect or you can find the opposite effect. Uh, meaning correct effect is input goes down, light bulb gets brighter, and output on POC1 
gets bigger. Uh, the wrong, the wrong effects would be uh, the bulb dims and the output goes up, or maybe even the bulb dims even if the input is going down a little bit. Um, but it is frequency dependent and duty cycle dependent. So I will try going through some math. This time, I'm going to take a little bit closer look at uh, how this relates to the coil's uh, natural resonance. Uh, the frequency at which they like to talk together is, uh, I think for these, it was somewhere around 4.5 kilohertz, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's next. I'll dive into some math and just study this a little bit more slowly and accurately. And then at some point, I'm going to mess around with the uh, input coil over both. And uh, I guess that's it, if I haven't forgot something I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, last thing I guess I could mention is, again, uh, with this setup, just like my last one, I actually have the input uh, coil opposing POC2, and then POC2 opposing... POC1. So it's not exactly how uh, Chris has uh, laid out in his experiment. Um, with the other way, I just have trouble. I don't know why. It's weird. Mm, that's it. I guess I'll cut the video here. Thanks.